is this why everything is like intensified right now? And there's like, I at least know that everything in my life seems to be manifesting so much faster than, you know, five, 10 years ago. It seems like instantaneous. It's almost out of control at times, you know? Is that what's mm -hmm. happening? That, that photon um, frequency is increasing? Well, so we can also correlate the seven densities to the chakras. Mm. Um, so the fourth density correlates to the fourth chakra, which is the heart chakra, right? Love and oneness. Mm. Um, and so the way to open the heart chakra and now the heart chakra is, there is no most important chakra, but in a sense, you could almost say that the heart chakra is like the most important one because it's kind of the bridge between the lower three chakras, the root sacral and solar plexus, which are the earthly chakras, you could say, and the upper three spiritual chakras, the throat, indigo, or sorry, pineal gland and crown chakra. The heart is the bridge that kind of unlocks the ability for the spiritual rays to be available. So basically, until your heart chakra is open, you have no ability whatsoever to access any abilities of the throat, the pineal gland, or the crown. And so as to open the heart chakra, we have to do what's called shadow work. And Ra talks about this in the Law of One. They basically break down the heart chakra into two basic forms. Uh, the outer courtyard, and then the inner sanctum. And in the outer courtyard, that's where we are met with all of our shadows, right? Our inner demons, the skeletons in our closet, the parts of ourselves we haven't been loving, the parts of ourselves we judge, and then project those judgments onto others. Uh, this is why I'm such a huge fan of The Course in Miracles as well, because in a sense, like the two texts to me are just like perfect dance partners, because the law of one explains the model of where we are and the course kind of explains uh, how to ascend to fourth density consciousness. And the course explains that through um, other people becoming the, the bridge to that fourth density awareness. Meaning if I see others as myself, my heart chakra must be open. I literally have no ability to know what oneness is if my heart is closed. I can only see you as separate from me. And if you're separate from me, you're an obstacle for me to overcome. You're standing in my way, right? And in the heart chakra, you actually become the way to my salvation. By, by loving you, by wanting your highest good, I unlock my heart chakra, and basically giving and receiving are the same thing, right? Uh, giving is proof of having. So if I love you, I must be the source of that love, right? So that's what opens the green ray heart chakra. And in this phase of our collective, we're doing that collective shadow work, right? We don't just get to dance and frolic into fourth density freely. We got to go deal with all the crap and the baggage from third density, from all the wars, the strife, the separation, the calamity, the hatred, the judgment. You know, hu humanity has done a lot of really sick, twisted, vile things to one another. And that's our karma, right? Your karma doesn't just poof away. Uh, the universe is just. So it asks you to deal with your karma. How do we deal with our karma? through love and forgiveness, right? Mm -hmm. So the earth being a being itself, like mother earth, you can think of her like an entity. She is doing her collective shadow work as she moves in, is in fourth density. And so things like the COVID-19 crisis we're in right now, um, all the George Floyd stuff, the, the racial tension, this is all echoes from our third density past. And we have to meet those echoes with love and understanding. We have to forgive ourselves. We have to forgive one another. And so we're in a very kind of um, delicate time right now where the way we deal with these problems is of the utmost importance, meaning we can't swing so far to the other side of the pendulum and just recreate the same problem, right? So like in the Black Lives Matter movement, for example, there's this tendency to say, well, because we've treated African Americans so horribly, then we should hate white people now. And that's just the same exact state of consciousness of separation, right? Mm. We have to see that we are all one with one another. There's no order of, of differences between us. And so we're just watching our collective work those issues out. And, you know, we're going to see that pendulum swing to each extreme for a while in politics in government, in the social climate. And that's why you just have to see what's happening and accept it as valid. It's a valid part of our shadow work. You know, if you've taken ayahuasca or something like 
you know what happens, man. Like it's messy, right? It's not like a super pleasant experience, but it's the experience you need to have so that you can get into the inner sanctum of the heart, which is where you're met with the love of the one infinite creator and you can begin radiating that love and embodying it. And so who knows how long our collective will take to really make that transition. I think probably a, a couple hundred years, and in my opinion, before we really understand kind of the game that we're playing and we can really come together. And when we come together, like we have no idea what we're going to be capable of in terms of technology and seeding other stars and planets. And the possibilities are literally endless, but first we have to become one, right? That was just mind blowing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> thank you for that.